for something completely different. It's Traumschmiedes Flying Painters. Welcome to a new tutorial series, Fast Painting of an Imperial Baneblade. You can also find a very detailed article on this topic at our blog, where I painted a squadron of lemon rust tanks. I won't explain everything on the model, the main focus in this series are the battle damage using the salt technique, the green main color and the camo, and finally basic weathering with oil color. The whole model was undercoated black first, then airbrushed with a well coating layer of armor brown for Vallejo air color. This is followed by a lighter brown tone. I can't remember the exact product, but this will work with every lighter brown I have to hand. I use diluted airbrush color and really thin layers of it. I also try not to spray into the recesses between the armor plates. It really helps to pin all of its small parts to wire pieces, and you should keep them together in one place so we don't forget anything. While spraying the lighter areas in the middle of the big armor plates, I use zenithal light for those details, so they will stand out more. In the next step I use Vallejo Air Mahagoni and follow all the recesses in the lower parts of the detail pieces. This makes the shadow areas really strong and that's okay, as we will lose much of this contrast with all the additional layers and steps. Again I used Tamiya X20A thinner to thin my paints. To bring the whole paint job together I use a very thin mix of armor brown and thinner and spray this over the whole model. This is a transparent filter. And our rust is done. How much per work you put into this depends on how much rust you will see in the end. As this is a very big model, I want the, the rusty spots to have different colors, different appearances, and so I used the well different brown tones for recesses, for the edges of the plates and the middle. You could also just use one spray layer of brown and that would be okay, especially if you use paint smaller tanks. Now we use salt and hairspray for the battle damage. Simply spray the hairspray on the model and then sprinkle some salt on it. These areas will remain the original brown color in the end, thus creating our rusted areas and most damage will occur at the edges of the plating. Make sure you work in small areas one at a time, so the hard spray doesn't dry while you're working on the whole thing. Depending on how much layers of hairspray and sole you're using and how thick they are, the more or less color will rip off from the model and the more easy it will be. Let us try to the touch, but not too long as the paint won't chip if we wait too long. I mix all the colors before starting to have them at hand and save some drying time. The basic green is Tamiya XF13JA green. The F in the color code stands for flat and means it's a matte color. I use Tamiya thinner here and believe me, you don't want other stuff for those. Then I mix two middle tones, adding XF4 yellow green and the final highlight tone with pure XF4. I also prepare a cup of airbrush thinner, as this stuff has way more pigment than acrylic colors from GW for example. If you spray thinner during your steps, you'll be able to spray for a long time without major cleaning.
be sure you mix enough paint and remember, we're painting a big beast here. It can be really hard to mix the middle tones again while knowing time is running. You can also see I use small amounts of a JA green for the lighter mixes. I then mix bigger amounts of yellow green to them. We start with the JA green and spray all the armor plates. Again we will highlight the middle areas here and the upper areas on the details. Work in multiple thin layers as this color really builds up, volume and height, if I use too much of it. Try to leave recesses in our original brown color. I repeat this and build up the basic tone. This way I can also control the amount of paint and the resulting color. Simply use more paint for the middle areas and let us fade out to the edges using less. Next we use the first middle tone and spray beginning in the middle of our plating using circular movements and spraying small amounts of color. This builds up a gradient towards the edges. Again I repeat this before I use the next lighter tone. You can see that it seems much brighter in the second layer.
we need high contrast between light and shadow here, as the use of all color will reduce our contrast later and tie everything together. If the colors are too close to each other, we'll only see one color in the end instead of a nice gradient. The final highlights are done with heavy, thin, pure yellow-green. Be patient here and spray with care. This is really strong and we don't want it everywhere. Now we need hot water as this can solve more salt and we have to change it less. A stiff and hard brush for scratches in the biggest salt pieces. A stippling brush is also ideal for this technique. A soft big brush to apply the first coat of water and a scalpel for long scratches. As the Tamaya builds up a relatively thick layer of paint, we'll have a 3D effect on our chipping. That's why I like them for tanks. I cover the whole model with hot water. This gives the paint time to soak it in and solve the salt. As you use heavy coats of hairspray, this already creates the first chips and rusty spots. Be careful here and try not to scrub too hard as this rips off a big chunks of color. If the salt or colors to resistance, simply add some more water and wait a bit. You get a feeling for the areas where most of the damage occurs, as you paint more models and look at reference pictures. But we are painting a sci-fi tank here, and I don't care that realistic tanks wouldn't have that heavy battle damage. For me, 40k's dirty old machines. You can add as much or less as you like. Just use heavy layers and much salt for really weather tanks, and use lighter coats of hair spray and less salt for a more realistic approach.
Here's a close-up of a turret for you. I think this really shows the process. Simply cut through the color of those scratches, but don't use too much pressure as we don't want the plastic to shine through. Sometimes white drying marks will appear, but that's no problem. You can either repeat the washing with a brush several times, but let the whole thing dry in between. Or you can let everything dry for several hours and then dip the miniature into fresh hot water. Be very careful and try not to move it too much, because we let it dry that long. The water can't solve the paint, but will remove the salt. Be very, very careful here, so you don't ruin your effort. And never use running water for this, as it rips everything up. Hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for the next part behind some door in our advent calendar. If you like what we do, share, like or follow our blog and share our videos with your friends or strangers on the internet. Have a nice day everyone!